Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. In this video, I wanted to show you the steps I use to get Panorama up and running with minimal baseline configuration, then deploy them as active passive high availability pairs inside of EVNG. So in my last video, I showed you how I successfully deployed a Panorama KVM QCAD 2 image into EVNG. If you haven't watched that video yet, go ahead and check it out. I'll put the card up above. Okay, so let's kick off the lab. First thing I need to do is log into EVNG. I'm going to use the default admin and Eve credentials. I'm going to use the native console. So this allows me to use secure CRT or putty natively. If you don't use either one of those clients, then you can select the HTML5 console. And this will allow you to use the tabs in your browser for each of the console sessions. Let's start by clicking on each of the panoramas within EVNG to open up a console session. Let's make this window a little bit larger. And you should get a login prompt. So I'm going to log into panel one. And panel two. Let's go back to panel one. So just before we start, I just want to let you know that I was having a few issues with the console session. So when I was typing in the command, um, after a certain length, the, the command would wrap, so word wrap, and then start overwriting the start of the command. So instead of messing about and not being able to show you clearly, what I'm going to do is just copy and paste the commands directly into the window. It's not ideal, but at least you can see exactly the commands I'm putting in. Um, so let's let's move on and go into configure mode. And now I'm just going to copy and paste each of these in, each of these commands into the console. So first we're going to set the host name. Then we're going to set the IP address and the subnet mask. Then we're going to set the default gateway. And I'm going to set one primary DNS server. You can add a secondary into that command. Um, I'll just add that in the web UI another time. Now we're going to set the time zone. So I'm in the UK. And then lastly, I'm going to be setting the NTP server. So that's the word wrap issue I was seeing. So if anyone knows how to resolve that, please let me know in the comments. I'll put all these commands on the, on the screen, but also it's going to be on my website. Um, I've got a blog post that details all of these commands anyway. So if you head over to www.mbtechtalker.com, there will be a blog post um, on this panorama baseline. HA configuration. So now that we've done that, we can commit that change. And then we can just repeat the steps on Pano 2. And go back over to panel one, see the uh, configuration committed successfully. Panorama is moaning that there's no disks enabled on the log collector on this panorama because I'm running the in panorama mode, so mixed mode. So it's the management and also the log collector. But I'll resolve that in another video and I'll show you how I set up a log collector within panorama. So now we can uh, attempt to browse to each of the panoramas via the, the web UI. So let's open up a browser and test connectivity to the web UI. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 10.10.3.21 and HTTPS 
10.10.3.22. So we've got a login, which is good. And then enter the password. So up to this point, it's looking good. If you're having problems and you aren't able to connect, you can go back to the console session. And if you issue the show system, oh, you've got to come out of configure mode, type exit, and then show system info. You can take a look at the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, pretty much what we've just set up um, previously. So these pair of panoramas already have a d device license. So if it was the first boot up, I would go to the license section. So underneath the panorama tab, and then you look for licenses. And then you would retrieve license keys from the server. Uh, and as long as the panorama has been registered in the Palo Alto customer support portal, um, you should get a device management license here. The next step I would do is check that, that I can download dynamic updates. Uh, by going to this dynamic update section and then clicking check now and then install the latest and greatest packages to make sure everything's current. So at the moment, I've um, I've got this downloaded and it's installed. So the antivirus and the application and threats. So if that's successful, then you've got obviously one, you've been able to retrieve your license from the license server, which, which connects over the internet. And secondly, you're able to connect to the update server. So at this point, you know, you're good to go. So now that I have the basics configured, I can proceed with the high availability configuration. So my aim is to have an active passive pair of panoramas for redundancy. So from the panorama tab, I'm going to select high availability at the top. And then in the setup window, I'm going to enable HA. And then I'm going to put the management address of the secondary panorama, which is 10.10.3.22. And I'm going to need um, the serial number of the second panorama. And I'm just going to click OK. And then in the election settings, I'm going to set the priority to primary because I want this one to be the active panorama and you can see that preemptive is um, ticked by default so this means if this panorama goes down for maybe the power gets unplugged the secondary panorama will take over but if this panorama that comes back up it will then resume the primary role but just a note on that if you are deploying high availability in a production environment Please read through the Palo Alto Network's high availability tech doc to understand that you're meeting your requirements. So I'll put the, the link up on the screen and in the description. So now that's set up, it's really easy on Panorama. We can commit that change. And I can just repeat the steps on Pano2. So again, go to the Panorama tab, High availability. And then go into the setup, enable HA. We put the, the primary panoramas IP management IP address in here and, and the serial number. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Click OK. And then under priority, you're going to set this to secondary. And then click OK. As you can see, preemptive is ticked by default on the secondary device as well. And then I'm just going to commit to panorama. So go back over to panel one. So the command was successful. So if we go over to the dashboard and then in the drop down of the widgets 
option and go to system and high availability. It's going to add the high availability widget to the dashboard and that will stay there until you actually click the cross and then it will, it will remove it. And this gives you a kind of a traffic light scenario. And as you can see, as we're on panel one, local, this is the primary active panorama. The peer, which is the secondary passive. Um, the app version, the antivirus and um, panorama version all match. And also the HA1 interface is up, which is using the management interface. The only thing that we need to resolve is the running config has not been synced from the primary active to the secondary passive. So we simply click this hyperlink here and it, we can sync the configuration across. So if we just refresh this. So that's all working. Now I have a synchronized active passive pair of panoramas with a basic baseline configuration. So then my next step is to run a best practice assessment um, referred to as a BPA against the panorama configuration and start ticking off the failed elements of the report. So if you have any questions about this configuration or my lab setup in general, then drop them in the comments below. I'm already working on future videos and as always, they will center around Palo Alto Networks technology with some Cisco networking thrown in as well, all working inside of EVNG. If there are any specific topics you would like me to cover, please drop them in the comments too. Don't forget to head over to www.mbtechtalker.com to take a look at my blogs as my blog posts complement the videos that I make, up on, make on YouTube. So that's it, guys. I'm sure you know what to do, but if you don't, please hit that subscribe, smash that like button, and click the bell notification. I will see you in the next video.